Wonderful. Thank you everyone for joining our side event for the High Level Political Forum 2020. It's called Solar Cooking, a transformative approach to advancing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As with most of our work, this is a collaboration between Solar Cookers International, the Public Private Alliance Foundation, and Convit pour Development Commune Côte de Fer. Our presenters today will include myself, Caitlin Hughes, the Executive Director of Solar Cookers International, Dr. Alan Bigelow, the Science Director and main representative to the United Nations for Solar Cookers International, Dr. David Stillman, the Executive Director for the Public Private Alliance Foundation, and Rose Bazil, a registered nurse and the Solar Cookers International Global Advisor for Haiti. She's also the founder and chair of Convit pour Development Commune Côte de Fer. A few logistical details. Thank you everyone for joining. We are excited for this opportunity to share with you. All participants will be muted during the presentation to preserve sound quality. There is a dashed square icon in the upper right corner of your presentation window that can be used to enter full screen mode. This will make the text easier for you to read. If you have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we will address them as time allows during the question and answer time at the end. This webinar will be recorded so we can share it with as many people as possible. And thank you again for joining. Thanks so much for being with us today. We are dedicating this session and this side event to Dr. Sonia Heptonstall, who had been an extraordinary volunteer and representative to the United Nations for Solar Cookers International. We lost Sonia just last March from pneumonia due to complications of COVID-19. While we are extremely saddened by losing her, we're very thankful of uh, all the work she did to amplify the voices of those who are in great need and can benefit from solar cooking. And to not forget her passing and uh, the pneumonia that she had. Pneumonia affects and kills many people each year. We're interested in helping save 1 million lives per year of people who die from pneumonia. So again, thanks to Sonia for, for being a, such a great voice. And it was really a pleasure to work with her and also to meet her in person. So with that, let's uh, move into the, the topic. And right away, uh, to present the problem that we are looking at solving with solar cooking, here are two pictures that I took in Kenya last year at the same location, essentially about a minute apart from each other. And this shows a very typical scene inside a, a Maasai villager's home where cooking over an open fire takes place. And you'll see a, a woman cooking and near her child who uh, are exposed to the smoke from that cooking fire for many hours a day. And just outside their home, uh, the husband is shown here um, outside in a, with an abundance of sunshine. So the contrast here is what we're trying to work with to, to uh, bring that energy that's freely available uh, to reduce the amount of smoke in the homes and essentially save lives. Another scene in Kenya from last year 
This is a picture from Kakuma Refugee Camp. Kakuma Refugee Camp in northern Kenya has practically 200,000 people living there. And the NGOs that supply cooking fuel, mainly firewood, to the refugees, these NGOs cannot meet the supply. Hence, scenes like this develop where the host community comes in, meaning uh, Turkana people from northern Kenya, and establish markets for cooking fuel. And so in this scene, you see uh, quite a typical scene from that refugee camp where charcoal and firewood are being sold. Meanwhile, there's an abundance of sunshine overhead. So we're working toward bringing relief to many who are strapped by this uh, condition and to help improve the, the economics of uh, and, and the lives of the, uh, the refugees inside the camp. Okay, so more on that. What is a solar cooker? If this is something new to you and you've never heard of a solar cooker, it's simply a device that collects and absorbs direct sunlight and retains that heat for, for cooking food and for pasteurizing water to make it safe for drinking. In this picture, you see a very simple box oven, a solar box oven. How do solar cookers work? We are using this acronym CARES to help explain how a solar cooker works. C for collecting light, A for absorbing light, R, we need to retain the heat. It's easy, it's efficient, safe, and sustainable. So there are some basic physics properly efficient, safe, and, and uh, in absorbing light, dark surfaces are very useful. So often blackened pots are used and that helps absorb light. Also small greenhouse technologies, glass windows, as you see in this picture, help retain the heat. And, and you'll see that uh, common aspect in, in quite a few solar cookers. There are three basic types of solar cookers pictured here in this slide. We have the very simple but effective reflective panel solar cooker. And in this case, you can, you can see that we are collecting light with reflective surfaces and absorbing the light on a dark pan that's on the inside of a greenhouse, which in this case are two Pyrex bowls, one ups, upside down inverted over the other to make a clamshell. And that's quite an effective solution for a greenhouse. There is also the box oven pictured on the right, which is taking the essentially the technology of the reflective panel, but making it more durable and uh, more uh, increasing the capacity of what is inside. So the technology starts to step up to, to higher, uh, higher capacities. And then with the parabolic reflector shown in the middle, this is a, a very powerful cooker, and I'll uh, overlay some ray tracing diagrams so that you can see essentially how the parabolic reflector works to take incoming parallel light rays and essentially collecting them, concentrating them at the point where we have a, a cook pot. So these are examples of thermal cooking, and there are hundreds of variations on, on these basic types of cookers that are available for purchase and also for, for making at home using open source designs. Um, a few more types of cookers. Here, there's an evacuated tube cooker, which essentially is like a thermos with a transparent outer wall and a collector that helps gather more sunlight. It's a very effective solar cooker. And in this case, this is a picture that I took here at home in New York during the winter time, where on a sunny day, yes, you can cook during the winter. Um, it's really the sun that uh, is, is the important factor here. As well, there are institution-based cookers. In the other picture, this is taken 
at a rooftop at a boarding school in Nepal. And the cooking is done using this system for several hundred students who live at the school. And in this case, these large dishes that you see here are um, used to gather light, collect light onto rec receivers that are the bright areas along the, the plumbing. And essentially what happens is water is heated to steam and the steam then travels down into a kitchen that's in the building downstairs and the cooking continues in quite a, an impressive mode using double jacketed cooking vessels where the steam fills the, the uh, space between the, the, the two walls of the cooking vessels. We like to showcase that type of cooker in that it shows the transformative potential of solar cooking really worldwide where there is an abundance of sunshine. And in this case, um, several hundred students are able to have food uh, cooked for them using the sun. There are several complementary technologies that we would like to also mention. One is the retained heat basket. In this slide, you see two examples of the retained heat basket. One is a very simple model. Uh, well, they're both very simple. <laughs> and these can be made locally with uh, the artisan skills. Um, essentially, what you use the retained heat basket for is that once a cook pot has the temperature of the, the food contents for cooking, then that can be removed from the stove or the whatever is being used to heat it in, 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 uh, in, as an example of solar cooker and the cook pot can be placed inside a basket that has wonderful thermal insulation qualities and the food can keep cooking without heat being applied in addition to to that system the two pictures that are on the right are from an extraordinary adventure that I was a part of in, in November of 2013. And this was a solar trek organized by two solar cooking champions, Martin Oltoff and Ramkaji Padel. This occurred in Nepal at high altitude for nine days. 24 trekkers were able to have their food prepared by solar cookers entirely. And it was an ex a very ex successful experience. And retained heat cookers were used during that expedition so that we could have hot meals in the evening. So you can see in these pictures, food being placed into the, the heat retained basket after the temperature, uh, cooking temperature has been met. And then uh, these were, uh, baskets were then carried from, from site to site. But a very important complementary technology. As well, we have the water pasteurization indicator, also known as the WAPI. And what this is, is a very simple temperature monitor or a, uh, a thermometer. <laughs> and basically it will say either yes or no, um, whether or not your water has reached the pasteurization point of 65 degrees Celsius at a point where you kill off the, these uh, microbes, the waterborne microbes that can be harmful to our health. So it's best to uh, make sure that uh, these complementary technologies are in incorporated into solar cooking projects so that uh, the, this wide array of, of tools can be applied for the betterment of our health. I'll turn the microphone over to Caitlin for a moment. Caitlin? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, for that wonderful overview of what a solar cooker is how it works, and some of the different types of solar cookers and complementary technologies. So we wanted to give you this introductory information to then explain who is Solar Cookers International. We are a nonprofit that has been leading and convening the solar cooking sector since 1987, more than 30 years. We work with hundreds of collaborators in over 135 countries. 
And we improve human and environmental health by supporting the expansion of clean and sustainable solar cooking in vulnerable regions. So how do we do this? This is a challenge that affects about 3 billion, with a B, people. So that's about 40% of the world's population still cooking over open fires. So there's a lot of need and opportunity for solar cooking throughout the world. And Solar Cookers International has asked ourselves, how can we make the greatest impact for those 3 billion lives? And our answers come in three parts, capacity building, advocacy, and research. So Alan and I are going to give some more information about specifically how Solar Cookers International works to address this challenge through these three areas. The first one we'll talk about is advocacy. Alan? Thank you, Caitlin. So why does SCI advocate? SCI is uniquely qualified to represent solar cooking at the United Nations level, we have established what's known as special consultative status at the Economic and Social Council at the United Nations. And with this status, we essentially have the honor to be able to join and participate at UN level events, such as the high level political forum that we are at today. As well, we go to the Conference of the Parties, which is the United Nations Climate Change Conferences, COP, and the CSW, the, the Commission of the, on Status of Women, which is very important to our mission as well. We essentially try to encourage governments, party leaders, stakeholders, and other NGOs to incorporate solar cooking in their work and we can give them guidance through many of the tools that we have available, the tools and resources on our website, and then also our individual, the individuals who, are, who make up part of SCI and also uh, connect others to, um, that are within the solar cooking sector. One of the fascinating aspects of solar cooking, and this really is what we emphasize when we are at the United Nations, is how well solar cooking acts as a cross-cutting solution that can benefit achieving all 17 sustainable development goals. So there's a bit of text on the next few slides, but I wanted to just give an overview on how specifically solar cooking can make a positive benefit toward all 17 sustainable development goals. In the case of no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, we've spelled this out here. And essentially for areas where cooking fuel is extremely expensive, meaning that it's a large percentage of the budget of the family. Free sunlight can be a great help to that family for reducing their expenses. Zero hunger. By using free solar energy to cook food, you can essentially purchase more food if you're spending less money on fuel, on cooking fuel. So that really is a beautiful part here with uh, solar cooking and that there, it, it is truly a free resource that has many benefits. Good health and well-being, as I mentioned earlier during the dedication of this side event, there's no smoke. So while solar cooking can greatly reduce the amount of smoke that could be in a home because of traditional cooking practices, it can also save lives by reducing the onset of uh, harmful diseases. Okay, onward we have quality education, essentially the time spent to, to find fuel. In many parts of the world, still today, people are scavenging for, for fuel, spending hours a day, many hours a week. And this is often a task that falls on, on young girls, children, women, and they lose time. Time is lost. And that time could be gained by solar cooking. And you could use then that time for school. 
that dovetails in with gender equality because it's typically the women and, and young girls who are out looking for fuel. Clean water and sanitation, as I mentioned earlier with the WAPI, the water pasteurization indicator, we can clean water to make it safe for drinking using a solar cooker. Probably the most obvious benefit on the sustainable development goals is goal number seven for access to clean and affordable energy. It's definitely affordable, it's free. Once someone has a solar cooker, they can continue using it. There's no additional cost for fuel. Decent work and economic growth. Solar cooking can stimulate Entrepreneurs, we work with some in various countries through collaborations. Industry innovation and infrastructure. This is a technology that is accessible. You're able to go online at Solar Cookers International's website and obtain design plans, resources, information about solar cooking, and it can be uh, incorporated into markets and um, the manufacturing stream in local regions around the world. Onward, we have goal 10 on reduced inequalities, sustainable in cities and communities, responsible consumption and production. I'm not gonna read all of this, but if you take a look over the, the words, you can see again how solar cooking truly benefits all of these goals. We do have these, this information on our website, so you can access this as well and, and share it with your contacts. Climate action, life below water, life on land. Solar cookers reduce the emissions of CO2 and black carbon. There is a great call for reducing both of those particulates. Solar cooking can help make that happen and reduce climate change. Life below water, through solar cooking, we can improve the runoff from uh, biomass combustion. And likewise, life on land is improved by reducing cutting of trees. So the rates of deforestation that we're seeing across our planet right now are, are extraordinary. This needs to be changed and solar cooking can certainly help make that happen. Peace, justice and strong institutions. We are seeing more competition over resources. And to help bring solar cookers to those who need who are in greatest need, partnerships are extremely important. This is a global effort. This is a global movement. And as we are presenting today with one of our collaborators, actually two collaborators, I should say, <laughs> um, you'll hear later about how we're working together to share resources to achieve these goals. When we're at the UN, we often meet delegates from other parts of the world, delegates from nations who have the ability to make this change happen at their country level. And we congratulate Kenya, which this year, HLPF 2020, has acknowledged solar cooking in its voluntary national review. The voluntary national review is also known as the VNR. And, and this is a highlight of the high level political forum that nations will be able to present how well they are doing toward meeting the sustainable development goals. So we congratulate Kenya for mentioning solar cooking in their VNR this year. And also we encourage other countries to do the same for their future VNRs. I'll turn the microphone back over to Caitlin. Thank you, Alan, for that important overview of how solar cooking addresses all 17 sustainable development goals. 
And because this year's high-level political forum has a special focus on addressing COVID-19, we would like to share with you the top 10 reasons how solar cooking is essential during a global health crisis and beyond. So these reasons apply now, but also in the future, and they highlight the many benefits of solar cooking. So the first, as Alan touched on earlier, is that solar cooking reduces exposure to smoke from firewood and charcoal used for cooking, and hence reduces respiratory strain and the risk of respiratory illness. As he mentioned, approximately 1 million people die from pneumonia from cooking fire smoke every year, every year. And that is what we are trying to change. People with respiratory illness are considered high risk for contracting COVID-19. So we want to reduce, reduce that risk of comorbidity. Imagine a person who's trying to deal with a COVID-19 infection as well as having to breathe in cooking fire smoke on a regular basis, and it does not lead to good outcomes. So we are trying to prevent that. The second reason is that solar cooking reduces the risk of exposure to and spread of disease because it reduces the need to leave homes to gather or barter for cooking fuel. The sun is delivered right to our doorsteps every day. And thanks to Solar Cookers International supporters and collaborators, Solar Cookers are already in the hands of many of the refugee families in Kakuma Refugee Camp. This reduces their need to travel miles and miles to gather fuel or to go barter for it, as we saw in the picture earlier in the presentation from the cooking fuel market. The third reason is that solar cooking increases energy independence. With a solar cooker, people can cook with less dependence on supply chains, utility companies, or even having an income. The sun is free. So once people have a solar cooker, they can access that resource anytime the sun is out. Another important way that solar cooking is essential during a global health crisis is that we have created this incredibly strong network and infrastructure of global leaders committed to health and safety solutions. In this photograph is Dr. Jonik Palta McGilligan, who's one of our global advisors, along with Rose, who you'll be hearing from later. Because of our commitment to advocacy, research, and strengthening capacity, our supporters empower a strong global network, and we provide many resources online accessible anytime, which we'll share more about later. Solar cooking also reduces environmental impact, saving lives. Reports such as this article in the New York Times suggest a correlation between levels of air pollution and deaths from complications due to COVID-19. Using clean, sustainable solar cooking solutions for cooking food and pasteurizing water reduces air pollution attributed to cooking with firewood or charcoal. So it benefits on multiple levels. Also, solar cooking is accessible at home with more people at home during the day, taking precautions such as sheltering in place. Solar cooking is a very easy way to prepare meals while still performing essential work tasks. We've been able to hear from many of our collaborators, supporters, as well as our own staff and board members and volunteers about how much more they've been able to experiment and use their solar cookers while sheltering in place and staying at home. Please check out our website, solarcookers.org, especially our blog, to read some of those stories. Solar cooking technology is used for solar drying, and it increases food security by preserving food. So for example, let's say you grow peaches and everybody in your area grows peaches. Uh, when those peaches become ripe, the market gets flooded and then the price of peaches can go down. However, if you're able to use a solar cooker or a solar dryer to dehydrate, that's actually a value add. And then you can sell that product or consume that product throughout the year. This is especially important during global health crises, but anytime as well. Solar cookers are easy to construct with items you may already have in your home. One of the resources that Solar Cookers International provides is instructions and plans on how to make one in your home. Please go to solarcookers.org or the largest online database of solar cooking information, which is available at solarcookinging.org. That's the Solar Cooking Wiki, and it has about 1,800 pages of information, including plans on making your own solar cooker. 
Solar cooking can pasteurize water and kill bacteria and viruses. Solar cookers can be used during emergencies when other resources like fresh water and power sources might not be available. This also reduces comorbidity by reducing the number of diseases, waterborne and airborne, that a person's immune system might need to fight at once. And this is essentially important because your support can help scale solar cooking, which can diminish the impact of current global health crises, but also build future resiliency. Later on, we're gonna hear about an example in Haiti, how people had solar cookers before a crisis hit and the impact that that's had. Alan, would you like to talk more about Solar Cookers International's research? Thank you, Caitlin. Yes, and thank you for summarizing the power that solar cookers have to help people during this global health crisis that we're all in here. I know that I'm thankful every day, every sunny day that I can just go outside and use the solar cooker to cook my food. We're using the same sun in all parts of this planet. On to research, I'd like to talk about our testing program at SCI. So a little background, this is a picture from the fifth SCI World Conference in Sacramento, California in 2014. During that conference, several gaps were identified in the sector. And one of those gaps came from how solar cooker manufacturers were making claims about their products. And I should mention right now that SCI is brand agnostic and does not manufacture solar cookers. So we have a neutral position on, on that. So some advertising terms that I found on the internet around that time were that award-winning solar cooker was applied to one manufacturer and another manufacturer was saying world's number one solar oven and while another was saying best solar cooker. You can imagine that's extremely confusing to the consumer. And so we thought as a group at this conference that there needs to be an internationally agreed upon standard for how to test solar cookers for their performance so that there could be some number applied to the products to one, have accountability for those products, but also to help manufacturers advertise uh, to their customers. And so customers would be able to compare products and make decisions. Now, customers can be individuals, such as you as an individual, myself as an individual, but also this could be large organizations, entities at the United Nations, entire countries. If initiatives, large initiatives are going to happen, they need to protect their decisions. And so we have found that what we have developed through the testing program is extremely important. So a little bit of an overview about the testing program. We were given some very good advice to side with the standards that were starting to be created right around that time by a technical committee, Technical Committee 287 at the International Organization for Standardizations. So the timing was extraordinary to get involved with the ISO TC 285 and actually be a part of creating the standards that uh, are applying to clean cook stoves and clean cooking solutions. These standards are now published um, and this, this pictures show the group meetings in, in Nepal in 2017 and in Kenya just last year in 2019. So harmonizing with those standards, SCI has created the performance evaluation process. And this is a process that takes a pre-existing protocol, which is listed here. It happens to be known as the ASAE S580.1. <laughs> and it was a pre-existing protocol that was adopted by the ISO technical committee and said that is going to be the ISO standard as well. 
So we developed a, a set of instruments that is pictured here. And it was really created and built by this gentleman, Justin Tabachnik, who is SCI's research specialist, a colleague, and someone I interacted with a lot <laughs> through email and some phone calls to, to put this together. And it's been very exciting to now have a portable test station that can automate the standards for testing solar cookers according to ISO standards. So we're very thankful that we now have that instrument and it essentially will measure the temperature of an amount of water that's inside the cooking pot that is proportional to the size of the cooker. So the, the aperture or the, the, the intercept area, as we say, and we measure the temperature over time of water inside the cooker. We compare it to the ambient temperature, the out, outside air. Well, meanwhile, we gather wind speed information and also the solar irradiance of the day, how much sunlight is actually coming in. So something that's important here is that while we are measuring cooking power in watts, this is the uptake power inside the cooker, which is different from the input power. So input power from sunlight is on the order on a good sunny day, 1000 watts per meter squared. So while that is pretty standard across the globe on good sunny days, what we're measuring with the solar cooker, because you have different materials, different sizes, uh, is we are measuring the uptake of the power inside the, the cooking vessel. We now have a collaboration with, with other centers. So we are, are spreading this technology around the world. And so far, uh, we have two places in the United States where we can test cooking power. One is in California and one is here in New York. We also have a testing collaborator in Nepal and also in Kenya, in Nairobi, pictured here. So this is a relatively new program, but on this next slide, we have pictured the cookers that have been committed for testing. So that, that's a word that we're using that, that really means that the manufacturer has signed up for, for testing. So of these cookers that are shown here, some of these have been tested, some are being tested now, and some are on the way, they're, they're in the queue to, to being tested. Some that have been tested, the manufacturers are reviewing the results and to, to see if they, they approve of them, if they're happy with them, and from what we have so far, SCI has permission to show the results of four of those cookers. And here they are on this bar chart in watts. This is the standard cooking power in watts for this set of cookers. We're expecting to, add, to be adding to this bar chart very soon as we continue to get approval from manufacturers for us to, to promote their, their results on our website, which also helps our advocacy efforts as we talk to other organizations and stakeholders at events such as the High Level Political Forum at the United Nations. So to review, why is this important? Why is the performance evaluation process important? The PEP, is important because it helps you or anyone else interested in buying a solar cooker to be able to make informed decisions. It also brings accountability, credibility to the sector, to a sector that did not have this tool before, where manufacturers could make claims about their cookers that might confuse customers. So we're trying to bring all of that together and add accountability to the sector. Okay, I'm gonna turn the microphone back over to Caitlin to talk about another aspect of SCI's work. Caitlin? Thanks, Alan. 
Solar Cookers International facilitates expertise and best practice sharing with our hundreds of collaborators in over 135 countries so that collectively we can scale up to reach the demand of 3 billion people still cooking over open fires. We are so thankful and so fortunate to work with such amazing and dedicated collaborators who have their areas of expertise in their own geographic regions, as well as, for example, educating in schools or working with rural populations or developing social enterprises. And so Solar Cookers International really is, is thankful for the opportunity to create platforms for these experts to share and so that collectively as a sector, we can continue to advance and grow. So the ways that we do this include the Solar Cookers International Toolkit. This is available on our website, solarcookers.org, which you see in the bottom corner of each slide. And this has modules that are designed for specific audiences. So for example, if you want to learn more about our advocacy tools or our testing tools or how to select a solar cooker, you can go to our website, look for the toolkit, and then find the information that is what you are looking for. This creates a bridge also with the Solar Cookers International Wiki. This is the world's largest online database of solar cooking information. And there is a treasure trove of information. So as I said, you can find plants on how to make a solar cooker. You can also search by country. So I saw a question come in, uh, how do I get these in Nigeria? We actually suggest searching for Nigeria to see if there's people already in your country who are doing this because it's much easier to connect with a neighbor than it is to somebody halfway around the world. This also allows us to encourage best practices such as local production and also solar cooker selection that's adapted to the climate and the types of foods that people normally like to eat. The Solar Cookers International Wiki also automatically translates to 46 different languages. So that number I feel like keeps going up and we're trying to make it accessible to as many people as possible. And a big thank you to our team who helps, manages, who helps manage this incredible resource as well. Another way that Solar Cookers International helps build the capacity of the sector is to track progress of the sector. I remember when I started working at Solar Cookers International, nobody knew how many solar cookers there were. So it was hard to say, you know, how are we doing? Are things expanding? Where? And so we've been working as the leader of the solar cooking sector to gather and share this information so that each of us can use this in our advocacy efforts. So for example, when we meet a government leader and they say, oh, well, that's an interesting idea. We say, yes, it's not just an idea. Here is where it's actually in practice. So we invite you to go to our website. You can hover, hover over any one of these dots and learn more about uh, who's implemented it, how many solar cookers there are, what type, um, and then uh, learn more from that organization with a link to their wiki page. We have been able to identify over 3.9 million solar cookers worldwide and counting, positively impacting over 14 million people directly but I do believe that solar cookers positively impact all of us, at least indirectly, if not directly. We estimate over seven and a half billion with a B meals have been solar cooked, preventing almost 30 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions. And the savings from solar cooking without that carbon dioxide emissions is also incredible on both an individual, community, nation, and global scale. We broke this down actually by country with the solar cooking impact summaries. So we've been able to identify solar cookers in each country, but then also make estimates and projections based on the percentage of the population in each country that still relies on solid fuels. But then what the benefits could be both environmentally as well as economically for each country if that population switched to solar cooking even a quarter of the time. Um, because carbon dioxide emissions can have such negative benefits in terms of health and uh, hence a uh, country's GDP, uh, reducing those carbon dioxide emissions with solar cooking can have positive benefits on multiple levels. And we did these to encourage more investment in the solar cooking sector at large. So exactly with presentations like this, sharing this information with government leaders about how investing in Health, healthy, safe, sustainable solutions like solar cooking can really pay dividends in the long run for their country and their population. 
Solar Cookers International also encourages best practices within solar cooking initiatives. For example, the quick needs assessment. So this helps individuals and communities determine if solar cooking is a good fit. So that's looking for um, the right space, the right climate, um, enthusiasm for trying this technology and sharing data. We also developed with the Adaption and Impact Working Group. So Solar Cookers International gathered about a dozen experts from all over the world because we recognized the need for a standard evaluation. Because as we were gathering this global data about solar cooking, we wanted to make sure we were comparing apples and apples to really measure this impact. And so we developed the standard survey so that people can assess fuel use before solar cooking and after solar cooking so that we can see the impact that it's making. This also helps people evaluate uh, what's working well in projects and um, any changes they'd want to make for the future. Solar Cookers International also manages the Solar Cookers International Association. So this is designed for people who have a high level of impact with solar cooking, and it can include entrepreneurs, academics, NGOs. And there's additional benefits with joining the Solar Cookers International Association, including networking, recognition, publicity. So this is an example of one of our associates here at the University of Madrid. So we are, we are happy to have those connections. So I've been seeing some questions come in about how do I engage with Solar Cookers International and how do we continue the conversation? And there are multiple ways to do that. One of which is through consultancy services that Solar Cookers International offers. So as I said, we've been working on developing these best practices and we have a lot of expertise in terms of project design, these surveys that I mentioned in terms of quick needs assessment, adoption and impact. Alan also gave us a great overview of the testing program so we can help interpret those results, um, as well as other data analysis and collaborator and resource referrals. In addition, like I said, we provide multiple online resources that are accessible and free from our website, solarcookers.org and the Solar Cookers International Wiki, the world's largest online database of solar cooking information at solarcooking.org. We encourage you to connect with our collaborators. Like I said, the Wiki has many of those, so you, including contact information, so you can reach out to them directly, especially the ones in your area. You can join the Solar Cookers International Association. You can sign up for more information. There's a link for getting our news on our website. Um, you'll also have the opportunity from registering for this webinar to do that as well. Please also encourage Solar Cookers International PEP testing of solar cookers. And we encourage you, if you're thinking about using solar cooking in your work, prioritizing using PEP tested cookers so that you know what to expect. And also we are including people, encouraging people to include solar cooking in their work. And of course, countries voluntary national reviews and other policy documents. So this is just a brief overview of the many things that Solar Cookers International is working on, but it's really thanks to the incredible team and network that we have. This is such a global movement and we couldn't do it without the incredible people that we're working with, some of which you'll hear from later today. Solar Cookers International would especially like to thank our global advisors, many of which are on the call, our board of directors, our representatives to the United Nations, our associates, our supporters, our volunteers, and our collaborators. Each of you plays such an incredibly important role on this global movement in working to reach those 3 billion people who really have the most to benefit from solar cooking and we couldn't do it without you. So genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you. And a special thanks to Dr. David Stillman who will be speaking next. Good afternoon, uh, in New York at least, and uh, um, welcome to this excellent discussion. I'm so pleased to be here with you and to have had the, uh, the opportunity for us all to hear uh, in, in great detail about the wonderful work that Solar Cookers International does. Now, the Public-Private Alliance Foundation is uh, going to uh, give you some information about one particular country and 
work in two places. Uh, the Public-Private Alliance Foundation is associated with the United Nations Economic and Social Council and with the Department of Global Communications, and we're a member of the uh, Clean Cooking Alliance, uh, as is uh, Solar Cookers International. So we, uh, we are very happy to be participating in this ECSOC high-level uh, political forum uh, this year, 2020, despite the fact that we can't be with you in person. Now, the Public-Private Alliance Foundation promotes the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through projects and seminars involving multi-stakeholder co collaboration. A special focus is clean cook stoves and fuel in Haiti. The COVID-19 crisis has presented a grave challenge, but also an opportunity. Next. This is a view of Haiti that we all want to see, with blue sky and green hills. Next. But most Haitian families depend on charcoal for cooking, with ruinous consequences for health, environment, and economy. You've heard from Alan and Caitlin about the global problems of this, and we have a special situation in Haiti as well. The Public-Private Alliance Foundation and colleagues have put the sun to work for clean cooking. We're engaged at a university and a children's center. Next. The colleagues bring many hands to the collaboration, and I want to mention in particular, um, among the logos on the right side of the page, Solar Cookers International, of course, and the KDCK, where Rose Basile will be speaking shortly, and she is really quite a dynamo. Down in the bottom corner, uh, the Haynes Solar Cookers, you'll see quite a few of them in a little while. And in the other two corners, the Université Notre Dame de IET at Hatch and the Art Creation Foundation for Children in Jacques Mel. But in the middle, you'll see a flame for the Solar Cities Global Biogas Education nonprofit, which uh, is also very much a collaborator on the biogas side of work at uh, Hatch. We won't have uh, a discussion about biogas today, but it's certainly a companion to solar cooking, and we'll want to explore that another time. Next. So at the University of Notre Dame d'IET at Hatch, there are 200 students in nursing and biological medical sciences, and we have established with, with our team the first known Haitian college course on solar cooking. The vice rector of the university sought and supports this since 2017. And the faculty and students put on an exposition that brought 300 people together and are enthusiastic members of the course for classwork and fieldwork. Teamwork is what it's all about with expertise to prepare and implement the course. And on that screen that I had with logos, you will find others, uh, Solar Education Project, uh, uh, Partners, uh, Hands for Partners, and others that are really very much important. Next. So before COVID-19, we had solar cookers for classwork and practice. And you see uh, speakers and participants and uh, students and faculty from the Université uh, with one of its main buildings in the background. A variety of solar cookers that Alan has already described to you of different sorts so that the students could learn about different kinds of equipment. Next. The vice rector in the suit and the student committee in green shirts and the visiting team, including Alan and Rose, uh, who you'll recognize uh, more or less in the middle of the, of the frame, uh, got things very much underway. It was a great start. Next. The nursing and biological medical students have taken uh, classes, filled out uh, their midterm and final exams, and worked hard, very enthusiastically, about uh, 20, 23, three students at a time in the classes, which, which have been semester long. Next. 
They learn new skills, as you can see, different uh, types of solar cookers and, uh, and the results uh, being shown in, in the right side of the picture. That the woman in black is uh, uh, Sardel Loisant, the instructor in solar cooking. She is a recent graduate of the university. Next. Students enjoyed solar cooked lunches together. That, that, that really puts a good, a good feeling in everybody. Next. Uh, next picture, please. Um, David, the title is COVID-19 Crisis and Opportunity. Do they, th this is the next slide. Do you see it? There we go. Yes, that is the next slide. And, uh, and, and the, there certainly has been a crisis in Haiti and elsewhere uh, around the world. Uh, we are all really uh, uh, seriously affected by this. Uh, and uh, Alan has, uh, and, and Caitlin have described how solar cooking can be a very important ingredient in, in coping with that crisis. In the case of uh, Hatch, the university campus uh, was closed down. The country has been locked down since March. There's no school, no work. People are worried. Prices have become unbearable. But at the same time, we have, with our partners, engaged in opportunity, adaptation, and innovation. Next. The staff and students at the university now provide clinic services and outreach. The, the clinic was already functioning on the campus and now has a new Im important purpose. And in the middle of the screen, you see in, uh, in Haitian Creole, that this is a jug of clean water for washing hands. And please leave the soap behind for the next person. Next. This is a splendid scene. A new initiative with solar cookers to 35 students for home use and reports. I couldn't get all 35 students in one frame or in two frames either, but I wanted to show you that this is something really quite dynamic. And uh, these, uh, these solar cookers are all uh, the Haynes solar cookers uh, that, uh, that have been provided through the Haynes Company and through Public-Private Alliance Foundation so that uh, these 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 uh, were first used in uh, the coursework, uh, some of them, and now the uh, the whole stock of thirty five uh, cookers and pots have been distributed. The uh, the instructors in solar cooking are are. are are encouraging and helping the various students. The students who have the cultures now at home were also students who learned about this in class. So this is something that we want to see uh, really succeed. And I'm happy to be able to put this number of pictures on the frame. Next. Now in Jacmel is the Art Creation Foundation for Children. The aims of that are personal growth, empowerment, and education of children in need. And it's accomplished through in art instruction, tutoring, medical care, meals, and education expenses. Next. The PPAF supports the ACFFC Young Entrepreneurs Baking and Sewing Classes and with related photos as well. Uh, the photo credits are for Baristine Pierre of You'll see quite a bit of shots by him in these next few frames. On the left, the, uh, the baking, and on the right, the sewing. Next. Students also learn to cook with the sun. Very enthusiastic. Next. But as we've discussed, the COVID-19 has brought quite a crisis but also an opportunity. The crisis in Jacmel and the country is the lockdown since March. 
No more than 10 people are allowed in the buildings. The city has become dangerous. Food and fuel prices have jumped and the ACFFC struggles to help its students and families. The opportunity, however, is adaptation and innovation. Next. The sewing class members now make masks, 1,100 so far. And you can see the students, two examples of the students uh, who had taken the sewing class and are now continuing as volunteer supporters. Next. And they distribute them in the neighborhood. On, on the left, the front door of the Art Creation Foundation, and on the right, uh, a, a scene in the neighborhood. Next. Cooking class members help to feed visitors. This is, uh, again, uh, only 10 people at a time allowed in the building. That means that the whole program has really closed down a lot. People who are students uh, and others come in from time to time within the limits and, and meals are served uh, on a catch-as-catch-can basis throughout the day. So solar cooking becomes important there, both for uh, the regular support to the kitchen and also, in fact, to limit propane use. And as I mentioned, propane and all kinds of goods for uh, food and fuel have become very pricey. Next. Another wonderful screen of lots of young people learning and doing. Solar Cookers new initiative at, uh, at ACFFC in Jacmel to the homes of students who have been in the cooking class for them to use and to report upon. This is a recent initiative. Uh, I'm looking forward to the reports that will be coming to us. Isn't it great to see these folks? Next. So you have seen already um, uh, blocks of students, uh, both in uh, Hanch and in Jacmel, and that matches with the blocks that you see on the sustainable development goals. These are the goals that we all want to achieve and solar cooking contributes to them. Alan has described the, the, the functioning of solar cooking in relation to all of these. And certainly um, uh, affordable and clean energy is at the top of the list, but also uh, climate action and, a re and action against hunger and poverty and promotion of health and gender equality. You noticed in the photos that I was able to show you that there's a very good mix of uh, boys and girls, uh, young men and young women. We're very pleased to see that and to support it. Next. Thank you very much. I'm David Stillman. You can reach me at the uh, email uh, or telephone number that you see on the screen. And please do take a look at the website of our organization, which includes lots of information that you may be interested in. Thank you again. Good afternoon. I am excited to share with you my experience uh, with solar cooking. Why do I solar cook? I solar cook uh, for the environment. I solar cook to save time and money. And I solar cook for, to protect and preserve health. To save trees. Next. Let's talk about the environment. I am from Haiti. In Haiti, the environment is critical. According to the UN FAO, the forest cover is 3.7. Haiti is rich in sunlight. This is a perfect place to take all the advantage of solar cooking can offer. It will help tremendously to the environment of Haiti. Next. Haiti is rich in sunlight, like I, I just said. 
but we're still using charcoal for cooking fuels. And we all know from what we just heard that uh, charcoal production will help and the environment. For example, let's take a look at the smoke. So the smoke in the environment send particles that we breathe and cause um, cardiovascular illness and respiratory disease as well, and cancer. And the smoke is uh, the, uh, absorb the sunlight and create global warming. And beside that, it's a big waste of energy. Only 20% of charcoal can be used. All the rest of the energy of the wood is lost. So many trees are being waste when Haiti can use our sunlight for cooking fuels. Next. Let's talk about health. Also, it's very healthy. It's very healthy to cook. There is no carbon emission. There is no carbon emission to send particles in the air um, for our breathing and no smoke to absorb the sunlight for global warming. And when we can see at the picture I have down here, this, the, the smoke is absorbing sunlight. So it's global. So it will be the best for the whole world to adapt uh, solar cooking uh, for our health, our economy, our environment. It's ideal. Next. Well, this is, uh, I cook everywhere. I cook in Haiti, I cook in New York, um, because I cook for a purpose. I'm committed to solar cooking. As I said, I cook to save time and money and to save fuels. And this picture is in Haiti. I was in a meeting, and then when I come out, my food was ready. So I have cooked yam and fish, and it tastes very, very good. So this is in New York. I save in New York also. Uh, this is a. Uh, I was busy uh, writing and uh, and doing other other work and my food was cooking outside. So this is, uh, it saved me time, it saved me money, and uh, it saved me fuels, and I don't have to worry about inside my house. It's cool all the time because I don't, my, the air conditioner doesn't uh, go off because uh, I cook outside and my house stay cool, and that's helped me save money and, and help me save fuels. So I cook everywhere. Everywhere I am, I have this, my, solar cook, my solar oven with me. So uh, to, to have in mind uh, what, I, what I need, uh, what I'm cooking for. Next. Okay, so all these good thing about solar cooking, it can, it can uh, save, protect your health and preserve your health. It can prevent, help in prevention of global warming and it saves time and money. And uh, in Haiti, it's, I'm, I really want everyone to, to earn a solar oven in Haiti. So, but it's not easy. I've been trying to do that for the last, five years or the last years, but it's not easy. So why it's not easy to solar cook for a Haitian to adapt solar cooking or to expand solar cooking in Haiti? It has to do with education. It's a new technology. They don't know how it works. They don't know um, uh, the science behind it. So it's not easy to adapt. So that's why we, we work after, after a few pilot uh, program in Côte d'Affaires and Port-au-Prince is in Eng. So Father Hewell, the uh, vice director of the University of Notre Dame Eng, 
So, and uh, with PPAF and then with uh, SCI, uh, we had a course at the university and the name of the course is uh, Sustainable Development Solar Cooking. So we teach the student how to um, make solar oven, how to use solar oven, the science uh, behind uh, solar cooking, and, uh, and how to start a, a self-help group, uh, to start a business uh, with solar cooking, and all that. And all these information, uh, majority of the information for the uh, course, came from the, uh, the curriculum. It's uh, from SCI Solar Cooking Wiki. So the SCI Solar Cooking Wiki was very important, you know, uh, for that course because all the information was there uh, in uh, writing the curriculum for the course and all the, the students needed to know. So this is where, uh, this is the reference, the source uh, that we use for the Sustainable Development Solar Cooking uh, course at uh, University of uh, Notre Dame, Haiti, Hench. And it's a very popular uh, course because the students cook every day and, you know, students truly love food. So, uh, and they cook every, every time they meet, uh, they cook. It's to help them practice how to position uh, the oven and then how to cook uh, any meal they want with the solar with solar ovens. And affordability, it's another issue for Haiti because some people are not working at all. They don't have any money. Even if it was 20 US dollars, they won't be able to afford it. Um, so we work uh, with for affordability, uh, solar project by NGOs and individuals are welcome. And uh, we teach them about self-help group also, so they can have uh, microfinance uh, and then help each other uh, earn an oven. So production of solar oven in Haiti, it's another, uh, it's another goal that we, we have in mind to work on uh, because uh, it will prevent uh, the fees for export um, uh, to Haiti. So that will be a very good step uh, for us in 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 uh, in uh, overcome expand uh, to expand solar cooking in Haiti. Next, so at Notre Dame University during the pandemic, uh, there was thirty five oven distributed to student as. Um, Dr. Stillman already mentioned. Um, this oven where, uh, this is the type of oven, these are the hens cookers that was distributed to students. That was before uh, the pandemic. They were in class and then they were teaching how to assemble the oven and how to use it. So uh, they will be ready to pass on the message uh, to other people in Haiti. Um, if anybody is starting a project, they be there and ready to teach uh, solar cooking. Next. Um, it's exciting. These students are excited as we already saw in the pictures. So to use uh, this new technology and to teach it as well. So it's a family affair. So the, the young man here is a student at the university. He took the solar cooking uh, course. And then um, this is his sister here, his teaching sister, how to use it. And his uh, mom or his family is getting the food ready uh, to put in the oven. So it's extremely uh, important for, for Haiti to have the whole family involved. So this young girl, she will she will uh, grow up using solar cooking. And in this way, it's become, uh, it's, 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 it's not new for her. It's something that she does every day and then she will continue to do and pass it on to her family and her friend. So we think the best way is to um, 
teach uh, the, the youth to use the technology so they will uh, continue using it for life and it will be like uh, the same way they use charcoal and in the same way they will be very familiar with solar cooking. Next. Okay, so it could be a social affair, you know, friends sitting together, they're waiting for the, the cake to be ready and then they learn and uh, they learn and share the information they have. So this is a very special way, you know, to expand solar cooking in Haiti. We invite uh, a project, you know, from NGOs and like um, PPAF uh, did and uh, give solar uh, oven and pot uh, to the university and the student learn and they can pass on this information. Next. So I am, this is my, I'm a nurse and uh, this is my uh, email, my telephone number. I am a SCI Global Advisor for Haiti. I'm excited to have that title this year. And uh, I think, you know, this is a very, a very important promotion for me. And uh, I am very excited uh, to continue working in Haiti and, and in the world uh, with solar cooking. And uh, I am uh, the founder and chair of KDCK. It's a hometown association where we, we, we work on sustainable development. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, I hope like everyone will get excited and solar cook for our health, for our economy, for our environment. Thank you, Rose, for that inspiring presentation and for sharing your personal experience with solar cooking and in Haiti. It's wonderful to have these real life experiences uh, and to hear what it's been like for you. So thank you so much for sharing and thank you to David as well for his overview. We've had a lot of questions coming in, so we will do our best to address as many as we can in the minutes remaining. So thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, one of the questions we received was, how can we help increase Solar Cookers International's presence on social media to generate more awareness? And thank you so much for asking that. Solar Cookers International has a Facebook page as well as a Twitter presence and a presence on LinkedIn. So we encourage you to follow us, to like, share, um, please uh, feel free to spread the word. Um, also encourage your contacts to sign up for our email updates uh, that can be found on our website as well. So Alan, uh, we, re we received a question about solar cooking inside, especially in a hot climate like India. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely, yes. I've uh, seen it happen for one. Um, and we covered a few approaches in the presentation. So I'll just go back and first of all, mention that, that solar cooking is an integrative approach in that it is an option when there is sun and it's freely available, use it for solar cooking. It's, it's there. Now, uh, indoors or at night, um, you still can solar cook. Uh, one of the aspects that I mentioned earlier was to use heat retention. The heat retention can keep meals warm and actually keep them cooking uh, well into the evening so that you can have a hot meal. There are also ways to cook indoors during the day. I'll mention two things. Uh, one is uh, by using sunlight that might be coming straight into a window through a, a skylight or through a south facing window. I know I've done that here in, in New York in the winter time using an evacuated tube cooker that I had inside, but I was using sunlight coming in the window. So for me, it was actually very uh, cold outside, <laughs> bitterly cold, but I was able to use that sunlight coming in through a southern facing window. There, all, there also are some in-window designs. So similar to an air conditioning unit that you might set into your window, Instead of it being for uh, air conditioning, it could be an oven, a solar oven. 
So we have seen some people uh, do that, and uh, that's a very exciting opportunity. I think that that should be uh, commonplace, we, we hope, to see more of those. And uh, finally, I, I have to mention these large institution scale systems that are based off of Scheffler reflectors that you see in India in a number of places. One of our global advisors, Deepak Gadia, is an expert in those designs, and we'd be happy to uh, connect you with, with Deepak if you'd like to learn more. And th there are others who also have that expertise. But these can be either very large systems on the rooftops where uh, sunlight is collected and um, uh, thermal fluid is uh, either a steam or a hot oil can be pumped down indoors to a kitchen for cooking indoors. And for that to be at night, that can happen if the the uh, thermal properties of this fluid are, are such that the, the fluid will keep hot uh, well into the evening and, and also in, into the next day. There are also some uh, thermal storage systems that are, that are uh, available, some that are fairly crude. Some people do use uh, very simple uh, objects like rocks, stones that can hold temperature well into the evening. And there is quite a bit of research with uh, phase change materials that are that's happening right now for uh, uh, cooking um, in the evening or at night. Wonderful. Quite a few, quite a few options. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alan. Um, so we also had a question on how to estimate the reference cooking temperature, max achievable temperature, and heat retention time using the methodology of standards the performance evaluation process that we talked about, um, which is followed by Solar Cookers International. I know there's a lot of detail to that and we don't have a lot of time, but maybe you can give a, a few few insights. Sure, I think the, the answer is that with PEP, with the performance evaluation process, we do not estimate, we measure. And I'm a scientist, I'm a physicist by training, and I always turn to measurements um, certainly, you can have estimates, um, but measurement is really the ultimate way to go. Uh, modeling approaches can be used using um, software uh, to, to model a system, but I think really for getting a good handle on the cooking power, the measurement is the best approach. For heat retention, I, I would have to say that uh, the, the tools that we have developed at SCI with a test station for PEP. We can also use that for making measurements in heat retention time as well. It's just applying the, the, the instrumentation in a different mode. Okay, but measure, I, I, would, I would encourage measurement. Have, have your system tested by SCI. <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> thank you, Alan. Okay, thanks. We received a question, uh, solar cooking is an option usually as part of fuel and stove stacking. And for people who might not know what stove stacking is, it's using multiple cooking devices at a time. So for example, if I was making a rice and a curry, um, that could be done using a couple different cooking methods. So somebody asked us, how do we approach fuel and stove stacking in our strategies to promote solar cooking, especially to make sure solar cooking is more frequently chosen than non-clean options in a household? And thank you so much to the person who asked this because it is a very important consideration. There's many points in the process how we can help encourage this, uh, one of which is the quick needs assessment. So making sure people are aware of the potential benefits of solar cooking. Also, lots of training and follow up. So that's a way to reinforce these benefits, um, as well as getting that data that we talked about in the adoption and impact survey and then sharing it with people so they can collectively see the impact that their household and their community is having with solar cooking for, for their own benefit. Um, of course, also we promote complementary technologies like retained heat baskets um, and continue to share those benefits at every step in the process. Do any other presenters want to add anything to that or should we head on to the next question? All right, uh, we received a question. Can solar cooking be used for barbecuing? Uh, Alan, do you want to talk about maybe briefly uh, different types of solar cookers that could be for, for barbecuing? Absolutely, yes. Barbecuing emits a lot of smoke in the traditional way. Um, I've heard quotes about the 4th of July in the United States, Independence Day, 
and the immense amount of particulates, soot, and that's emitted into the air. So a solar cooker can certainly be used for that. Some of the parabolic designs are extremely powerful. And if you have a grill pan that actually has raised ridges on it, um, it can act very well as a solar barbecue. So I, I can recommend parabolics for one. Um, but start doing it is, is my um, biggest advice is, is become a solar cook, learn about how the solar cookers work, use them. <laughs> you can solar barbecue. Indeed, indeed. Yes. In encouraging everybody to try solar cookers is, is a great way to start. Well, unfortunately, we are running out of time, but I do want to give each of our presenters just a few seconds to share any closing thoughts or hope or vision for the future. Um, Alan, do you want to start? Yes, I know that we are gathered together today, tonight, wherever you are, from all over the world. We had some 180 people register from six continents around the world. So we're missing Antarctica. <laughs> but otherwise, I was really pleased to see the representation. And this truly is a global movement. And with your help and your interest to uh, collaborate and work with SCI, we can do this. We can amplify solar cooking. We can scale solar cooking. The technology is proven. The health benefits are extraordinary. The environmental benefits are extraordinary, and so are the economic benefits. So I just invite all of you to get involved in this as much as possible and link solar cooking to other solutions as well that you might be working on. This is a powerful cross-cutting solution and very excited to be involved in it. Thanks. Thank you, Alan. David, do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share? Yes, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have been involved in this uh, presentation. I see from uh, my screen that we've had uh, 74 people attending this uh, seminar, more than would fill many of the rooms in which conferences are held. And I think that this uh, uh, session has shown that indeed solar cooking is and can be a transformative uh, a contribution to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Public-Private Alliance Foundation is very happy to have lots of partners and be active in this field. Thank you. Thank you, David. Rose, do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share? Yes, I would like to see Haiti use its resources, like the sun, one of the greatest uh, resources we have in Haiti, to change the cooking fuels and to solve our environment problem, our health and uh, our economy and all that. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy that you guys are in the journey with me in Haiti to make that happen. And I am sure it will happen. Thank you again. Wonderful, thank you so much, Rose. And we do look forward to trying to make solar cooking accessible to everyone who can benefit from that. And that's everyone who's touched by the sun. It really does take this collaborative effort. So we look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.